acknowledgement that there is one, but this belief, which is central in Islam, has a meaning. It's not only that I come and say there is one God. Everything which is coming with one God means in the name of this one God, you should know what is the meaning of your life. And you will never get the meaning of your life if you don't go through a, a process of education. So, God in Arabic is Allah. And by the way, the Christians, when they pray God in Arabic, they say Allah. So it's not the Arab, the God of the Arabs. It's the name of God in Arabic. And then, when you go to the Quran, you understand and you see that God sometimes is talking to the people by saying, Rabbul Alameen. And we translate this in, in English by Lord of the Worlds. And in fact, in a Rabb, it's not only Lord. In a Rabb, there is the root of Tarbiya, education. Meaning, he is the educator. Educating you to do what? Something which is here, the essence of this religion, to free yourself from your own jails, from your ego. In fact, it's a process which everything which is going to be your religion should be a process of liberation. No faith without liberation. To believe in God is to free yourself from what could just end up to make you an ego which is arrogant, close-minded, and not understanding the very essence of liberating yourself from your own desires. If you get that, if you are a Christian, if you are a Jew, if you are a Buddhist, if you are a Hindu, you understand exactly what I mean, because this is the universal message of all the religions. But sometimes as we are competing or conflicting at the periphery of our religions, we forget the essence and the light which is at the center. And I would say that today what we have to do is really to understand for the Muslims, and this is a reform of the Muslim mind, to come back to the essence which is understanding the liberating process of saying that there is one God and that with this faith we have to come with a better understanding. Why in fact there is this liberating process? If you come back to something which was said by the Prophet of Islam, he said once, I was sent to achieve, to complete the best behavior, the best uh, value. I was sent for that. My message is to help you to be better. In fact, the essence is not to be obsessed with the limits. It's to ask why the limits, for which end, what do we want to achieve? If you forget the end and you are obsessed with the limits, you end up not walking on the road by being obsessed by the limits age of the world. And this is nurturing a mindset. This is shaping a mind. This is shaping an attitude. And I would say that here, there is something which is so important for us, it's to come to this essence, is to free yourself in order to do two things. And this is the very meaning of this religion. Islam, if we want to understand its very meaning, and by saying this, I want all the people who are here who may find Islam, understand Islam as a problem because we speak about Islam, you will see that in our media coverage, all what I am saying is absent. We don't talk about that. We are at the periphery of the essence. And Muslims sometimes, because to respond to what is said about Islam, they remain at the periphery. They are unable to come to discuss and to present the very essence of this religion. And in fact, it is for you to understand that it's a process of education and God is the educator in order to do two things. Reform yourself and be a better person. Reform the world to make it a better place. That's it. You are here for that. Worshipping God is transform yourself.
You know why? Because at the end of the day, if you follow what is in, your, in yourself, it could be very bad. Because you could be violent, you could be aggressive, you can lie. You are even able to lie to the people you love the best, the most, your parents. If there's someone in this room who never lied to his or her parents, we know that. That it's all a process of self-education. Change yourself, reform yourself. And we have this in Arabic, islah and nafs, transforming yourself. But it's not enough. Transforming yourself means transforming the world. You cannot accept injustice, you cannot accept discrimination and racism. If, in the very name of this religion, every single human being is equal, it means that black or white, you should struggle for equal rights, equal dignity. So this is the essence, this is where we have to start. If we don't start with this, understanding the end of all the rules that we have, we are going to be obsessed with the rules for getting the ends. Even when we pray, we have some people they are so obsessed with the rules that they forget that we pray for something. Right? We have it in the Quran. You have to perform prayer in order to remember me. This is what God is telling you. It's a question of remembrance. Because you are full of forgetfulness. This is the very definition of human being. So much so that even when you love, we want to hear it again because we are scared that the one we love is going to forget. This is what we like when someone is telling him, I love you. We don't like when he is repeating or she is repeating, close the door. But I love you, you can't say it anyway. You, you know why? Because one, one sentence is talking to your heart and the other is talking to your mind. And the face is talking to your heart and calling your mind. So these are essential things that we have in our education, and especially for Muslims living here in the West, in a society, an industrialized society, when we live with non-Muslims around us, to come to the essence. Because when you come to the essence, to come to the universal. And when I speak like this, I know that the Christian, I know that the Jew, I know that the, anyone around me can understand what I'm talking about. Because this is much more what we have in common than the limits of the rules that we have, uh, that they are different for every single religion. So I would say here that uh, this is something which is so important. And by doing this, and understanding that, you understand a very important verse in the Quran that the Muslims should go back to it to understand their role in this life, their role in this society, even in the Western Muslim majority country. It is said in the Quran, We made you a nation of the middle path in order for you to be witness to your message before people. The, 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 what you have to do is to be a witness. What does it mean to be a witness? Try as much as you can to be consistent with your values. You are talking about justice, you are talking about honesty, you are talking about generosity. Try your best. Be a witness. It's not for you to convert the people. It's for you to be the best image of what you believe in. That's it. Now what is going to happen with the hearts of the people is between them and God. It's not of your business. You are not here to convert, you are here to be a witness. And I would say that when I talk, when, you know, I start an interfaith dialogue with <coughs> dealing with people on the ground, not by talking around the table. So when I went to South America and I met Christians working at the grassroots level, I can tell you that they taught me so much about Christianity, much more than books. Because I saw them consistent, helping the poor, speaking about love and spreading love. And when you have someone who is talking about love and we see in his or her life that love is everywhere, you get the message. You get the essence. So this is where we have to come to this. Because the psychological attitude which is to react to criticism could end up being formalistic and forgetting the essence. For all of us. Even for Christians in America, sometimes they have exactly the same attitude, understanding that it's less religious and that we don't understand, so they react with, no, yes, 
it's right, it's wrong, and only the rituals and not the light. So this is where I want us, all of us in this room, to come back to this. And as we talk about reforming in a radical way the Muslim mind, we have to start with this. Put the light before walking on the path. Know where you are heading. Know what are the objectives. Having said that, it comes to something which is another problem that we have. That because we lost sometimes the very essence of our religion and the substance and why we are trying to do something which is very difficult, in fact. It's very difficult to liberate yourself from your ego. It's very difficult to go beyond selfishness. It's very difficult, in fact, to be generous. Generous not with the people we love, because generosity is easy with the people we love. It's with the people that we ignore sometimes that we hate. Generosity is this. Generosity means what? I don't like what you are doing, but I'm going to listen to you. It's generosity. It's trying to understand. It's not an easy process. This is a very struggle. And by having all this in mind, we come to something which is the second problem that Muslims have and that we have to tackle if we want to change the mentalities from within. It's a question of terminology. We need to come to a better understanding of the very central terms and concepts that we have in Islam. Not only 